So when you graduate medical school, everybody does what's called an internship year. And there are three ways to do an internship year. You can do um, a surgical track, which is basically done under general surgery. That means that you'll spend the majority of your months, about six of them, um, in general surgery or general surgery type clinics or ICUs. And then the rest are elective rotations you'll have to spend a certain amount of time in internal medicine, like usually three months in internal medicine, and then there's like three other electives. And most people choose to do them in, in somewhat um, less demanding subspecialties, like dermatology or something like this, where it's just basically clinical hours because you're just getting slammed for the rest of the year. Uh, internal medicine is just the opposite, right? So six months internal medicine, maybe three months general surgery, and then three months of, of elective credits. And then there's what most ophthalmology gained or, or you know tracking residents do is go to something called a transitional internship which is like a hybrid of all of that so it's usually like three months medicine three months general surgery and then you get a little bit more flexibility in some of the other um you know electives some programs are a little bit different they require to do maybe a little maybe a month of OBGYN or something like that and everybody's program's a little bit different but generally speaking those are the three pathways through internship and then once you graduate an internship that's when you actually get your, you can fully practice medicine with a license, um, but nobody really hires you. And this is a problem in the United States, so you, whether you want to talk about it or not, but a lot of people can get an internship or can't get an internship. They'll graduate medical school and they have no place to go. Uh, but those that do, um, ophthalmology residency is a three-year residency to, to, to graduate. Uh, once you graduate, you then have to take boards. Uh, both written and oral boards that are generally done within the first year. Um, beyond that, beyond ophthalmology residency, you can go into something called a fellowship. Ophthalmology is a uh, a wide subspecialty that inv that involves numerous different subspecialties. So I myself am a cataract specialist. There's not a fellowship for that. Uh, it's part of what we call general ophthalmology or comprehensive ophthalmology, but um, you can be a pediatric ophthalmology and specialize in, in uh, movement disorders uh, of adults and children and um, you know, ocular malalignments uh, predominantly, and that's the base surgery that they typically do. Um, pediatric cataracts, uh, retinopathy of prematurity, meaning you know, preemie babies that are, are born at a young age have ocular problems uh, because they're not fully developed, and those are generally uh, screened by both retina specialists and, and, and pediatric ophthalmologists. Retina specialists, um, if you're, you can go into it two different ways. You can be a medical retina specialist, meaning you just do medical care of, of somebody's ocular problem in the retina. So that would be like macular degeneration and things of that nature. Or you can do a surgical retina fellowship. Medical retina fellowship is one additional year. Surgical retina fellowship is an additional two years. Surgical retina fellowships allow you to t repair things like retinal detachments and um, you know problems in the area of the central vision predominantly, things like macular pucker and things like this that could distort or cause problems with quality of vision. And there are other subspecialties, things like uh, oculoplastic. So it's plastic surgery of the head and neck, primarily the face, generally around the eyes, but doesn't really stop you from going into the low face. You can do facial lifts, things of that nature, brow lifts, um, you know, cancer procedures. You work hand in hand with dermatologists to reconstruct, you know, uh, cancerous lesions around the face. Um, you can go into cornea, which is just a specialty of the outside window of the eye called the cornea. That is a generally a one-year fellowship, and that can be broken in either uh, um, general cornea or refractive surgery. Refractive surgery would be the LASIK type. You can still do that as a general ophthalmologist. I do. I was trained uh, to do uh, LASIK without having to go to fellowship, but some people don't get enough training in residency to take on those skills, so they go on to a refractive surgery cornea fellowship that's more based in that, whereas general cornea fellowship is more cornea transplants and, and things called decimate stripping endothelial keratoplasties or, you know, really advanced corneal problems, scars, things of that nature, um, infectious problems. They are the end of the line for those types of things. And then there are other subspecialties, uveitis, inflammatory disorders of the eye. That's a different subspecialty. Um, they generally handle also some of the on, on uh, some of the more unusual we call garbage bag things of ophthalmology, stuff that just doesn't make any sense. They generally get sent to a UVI specialist because they're the smartest people in the room and can usually figure everything out. Um, 
and, and then there are glaucoma specialists that deal with uh, disorders of the optic nerve that, that uh, is a worldwide leading cause of blindness in the surgical and medical uh, care of that. A general ophthalmologist basically has their hands in all of those things and then can hone their practice down to what they do want to do or do not want to do. Like I personally don't do uh, any strabismus surgery on children. I feel like that's just too high risk and I'd rather an expert handle somebody else's kid. Uh, if it was my kid, I'd want him to be done by a true expert in that field. But there are many general ophthalmologists that are much older than me that started off doing those surgeries and continue to do them because that's just the way it was. These, the, the, the practice of medicine in general, whether it's this subspecialty or others, has really fractured more into a focus more on individual, what do you do best? So for me, it's cataract surgery, refractive surgery, and that's really what I do all day. I do handle general eye exams and, and stuff like that, but the majority of my clinical exposure and practice is, is, is cataracts and, and, and cataract and refractive surgery. So that's kind of a rundown of the whole subspecialty.